Okay, so I have my data that I've captured, which is my 4OD file here, um, and that is my Wireshark capture file. Now from that, I exported to a comma-separated value file, a CSV file, and uh, I have that in my directory here. Now this gives me the details of the time of arrival of packets, it can also give me the detail of how big each individual packet is. And from that, I need to extract a model that I'm going to use in my OBNET simulation, a model of my 4OD stream. Now, in order to do that, I need to identify how the inter-arrival times are distributed. Now, to help me out a little bit, I've written uh, a C program that will open up the Wireshark comma-separated value file um, and will extract the time of arrival of packets and calculate for out from that the inter-arrival times um, and generate from those inter-arrival times the histogram. So this is all automatically done for you, so that's quite nice. Now the input file at the moment is 4OD, and if you have a look here, that is the name of the CSV file, comma separated value file that I have. So I'm just going to run that, compile and run it, and you can see when I compile and run it, I have the, uh, the executable file now located in this directory. So I can see that the maximum value for my inter-arrival times is, is a second, my minimum value is, is zero, um, and my mean value is about five milliseconds. So you will have to play around a bit to try and identify the range in which you want to generate your histogram to enable you to, to best identify how the data is distributed. In this case, I'm going to have a maximum value of 50 milliseconds, a minimum of zero. I suggest that the minimum is always zero seconds. And I'm going to try 30 bins. If I click return with this, what will happen is in my file, uh, my folder, it will generate an output file, which will give me how many data values um, are between particular um, ranges uh, for, my, for my histogram. Now I can plot that out as a, as a bar chart, it's fairly common to do that, uh, as I've done here. Now this is just the data file put into Excel, and all that I've done is I've just graphed um, this histogram. And this sort of looks like an exponential distribution. Um, I could zoom in perhaps by generating more bins and expand this big point here, but I'm going to say this is, a, is a, an exponential, inverse exponential distribution. Now. In order to use that inverse exponential distribution, um, I, I need to know the mean arrival time, the mean inter-arrival time for my model in OpNet. So if I go to my OpNet model, I can see my application definition. This is my application 4OD, video conferencing, well, frame inter-arrival time. Now my incoming stream into arrival time is model with an exponential distribution and my mean outcome, well that is exactly, remember this is the executable file here, that is exactly the mean of the data that I've gathered. Remember this is for modeling the inter arrival time. Now I've modeled the outgoing stream into arrival time as being a, a very large value which means I only get, presumably as long as my simulation isn't that long, I only get one data value being generated to minimize the effect of my network. OpNet will not allow you to set this as being none. Um, it will bring back some errors. So having set the inter-arrival time, the other bit of my traffic model is that I will need the frame size. Now we can see here um, from my previous video, my frame size was almost constant, and I set this as being constant at about 1,350, between 1,300 and 1,400. Um, you may find, if you're not modeling a, a video stream, if you're modeling some other application, you may find that it's distributed in some way, in which case you'll have to identify the distribution by generating a histogram in the same way that we've done so for identifying the distribution of the inter-arrival times here. So, of course, you could identify the distribution of the frame sizes. I've modeled this as a, as, a, as a constant value. Now, my outgoing frame size, remember, this is not the stream I'm interested in. I'm just setting it to enable OpNet to work. I've set that as one byte to have the minimum effect on my network. So that is my traffic model. I've uh, applied a profile. I've applied the profile to this station here, my 4OD profile, and I've set up the services on this station here. And what I'm interested in is to identify how much traffic is actually being generated at the low level. 
So on this link here, I'm interested in the results at the point-to-point -point level. So what we can see is in one direction, I have words well, about 2.25 megabits per second, and that is the amount of traffic that is being transmitted by my 4OD. Now you can verify that in Wireshark using some of the statistics if you want, and I would suggest you certainly do. Um, if it is not as Wireshark records it, um, then there is an error in your model and you'll have to go back and tweak your model in some way. And in the other direction, of course, I have this single byte being transmitted at the start of the, uh, <coughs> of the data, of the data simulation. So that is how to go from, uh, in this file here, how to go from your comma separated value file. You're identifying how the uh, packet inter-arrival times are distributed. You're identifying how the packet sizes are distributed. And then you're inputting that information into your ARPNET model. Thanks for listening.